Today, I'm going to take a look at foreign language VHS tapes that were released in North America. Of the Disney variety, of course. Exhibit A, a French-Canadian VHS of The Sword in the Stone. Merlin L'Enchantois. Exhibit B, a US-released Spanish-language VHS of Alice in Wonderland. Alicia en el País de las Maravillas. Please, please forgive me if I butchered those titles. So to start off, my copy of The Sword in the Stone basically takes from the film's 1986 video release. The Sword in the Stone was one of the early classics titles, and it was one of those titles that never went on moratorium, which means that its first release got several packaging updates as time went on. This is true of the original classics release of Dumbo from 1985, and the 1986 classics release of Alice in Wonderland. The Sword in the Stone was first released on home video on March 25th, 1986. It was the fourth title in the then burgeoning classics line, and like its three predecessors, it was housed inside a nice black clamshell case with non-removable artwork. Some releases had it packaged inside a white case that was just like this. It was kind of unusual at the time, because they were all in black cases. In October 1986, the first five classics editions were all given slightly new packaging. The main artwork stayed the same, but the cases did not. Now the tapes were housed within white clamshell cases, with artwork that slides in. It's removable. The spine layout changed. We went from this, to this. This set the template for all future classics releases. The Merlin L'Enchantois VHS, for some reason, uses the pre-October 1986 spine layout. Well, almost. As you can see, no Walt Disney's next to the film's logo, but rather Walt Disney Home Video. The same layout as Pinocchio, Dumbo, and Alice's pre-fall 1986 spines. Let's look at the classics diamond for a second. As you can see, Les Classiques is not in the binner font that's used for the English language logo. Instead, it's this more universal font, as I feel the Binner font is very Golden Age of Hollywood slash Art Deco-esque. More American. As we collectors know, the Classics logo, Diamond, and Aesthetics were barely used outside of the US and Canada. One notable exception was Japan, and they had their own unique take on the Black Diamond logo. For some reason, this particular font appears on the last U.S. Classics release's ink label, The Fox and the Hound. No other English-language North American Classics label ever used this font. The videotape label, on the other hand, uses the English-language one, complete with the Benner font. Strange. Pop in the tape itself. We see that very logo in English. The opening credits and book text are in English as well. But the language is correct. French language credits of the Sword in the Stone do exist, but maybe this is all because, to my understanding, there are nuances that differentiate European French and French Canadian. Yet some French Canadian releases keep their French language credits, such as a 1986 Robin Desbois VHS. I've seen most of these French Canadian openings through Mr. Servo Retro's channel. Longtime Disney VHS collector, you should definitely subscribe to him. Also, what's up with the heading on the front cover? Typically, even on French-Canadian releases, you had the Disney's, or Walt Disney's, or Un Classique de Disney. I'm uh, sorry, I, I, I don't speak French, know very little about it, so please forgive me, but you get the idea. The Disney would be over the film title, it would be above the film title. And it would be something like Walt Disney's classic in French, or a Walt Disney classic in French. But instead, below we get De Disney. This translates to, of Disney, so, Merlin the Wizard of Disney? Well, technically, that is true. And there are some weird little audio, not errors per se, but weird little audio things that you can only hear on this dub. Like for instance, during the squirrel sequence, the girl squirrel that's chasing Arthur around, sometimes her um, chattering is very echoey. And then in other parts, it's normal. Sometimes it kind of goes back and forth between the two modes. <laughs> it's a little jarring. When this sequence fades in, we get a brief noise before the score cues up. And also the audio in this particular sequence it sounds like it's being tuned, like it's going from 
NTSC speed to PAL speed, and it's really, really weird, and it sounds like it's slowing down and uh, speeding up. I've actually, you know, oddly enough, this reminds me of Cartoon Network's airing of a particular Tom and Jerry episode from the mid-50s. I believe it was Pup on a Picnic, and whatever print they had of the movie, uh, I mean of the short film, it sounded a lot like the audio was kind of tuning, like when you would listen to something that's distorted or something, and it has that weird, vibrating, echoey sort of speed-up, slow-down effect, that very warped sound. During the excellent Wizards duel sequence, the audio amps up out of nowhere. Lastly, when Madame Mim turns into a chicken, there's no clucking. So you get to hear the score, but no clucking. French actress, I guess, didn't want to do the clucking. <laughs> Alice in Wonderland's Classics debut was on May 28, 1986, although this wasn't the first ever video release of the title. That occurred in 1981, rental only, and then late 1982 was when it was released as a sale-only title. During the old days of Walt Disney Home Video when they released rental-only versions and sale-only versions. So Alice was actually on home video before the Classics line was launched in 1984. Alice in Wonderland's Classics debut was the only Classics release to come in a cardboard slipcover case. It was part of a summer-long sale called the Wonderland Sale. Appropriate title. And in October 1986, like all the other Classics titles, it got the white clamshell upgrade. Now, like Sword in the Stone, Alice in Wonderland didn't go on moratorium after this release. The same goes for Dumbo. By fall 1987, Robin Hood and Pinocchio were in that Fort Knox of a vault. Sleeping Beauty was still available, and Lady and the Tramp was the newest title in the line. Dumbo, Alice, and Sword were given another packaging update, a more minor one this time. The VHS slash beta tag was removed from the front cover artwork. The stock numbers lost the V&B, and, and new labels were made. Sword saw one good sized change for this update though. The Disney's heading became Walt Disney's, much better, for it was completed in Walt Disney's lifetime. Then along came 1989. By this point, Disney was slowly beginning to dominate the home video industry. The sales of Sleeping Beauty, Lady and the Tramp, and Cinderella were extraordinary. A lot of the old guard at Disney were beginning to realize that their aversion to releasing these animated classics on tape was all for naught. To bolster the classics line's big fall 1989 title, Bambi, 
Walt Disney Home Video gave two of the three non-moratorium titles brand new covers. Dumbo and The Sword in the Stone's new covers, graphically, fit more in line with the newest video covers from the company. They wouldn't see new tape masters, meaning tapes with updated preview slush logos and better looking film prints until roughly 1991. So in the meantime, the 1987 era tapes were packed inside these new covers. Those particular releases are a bit complicated to talk about, so I'll just leave them to the side for now. Alice, for some reason, they left that one alone. Alice kept that cover all throughout its run in the Classics line, but it did get a slight update in the early 90s. The Walt Disney's heading was changed to Walt Disney's Classic, so that it finally aligned with all the post-1987 Classics covers. The big diamond on the back was removed as well, a staple of the early Classics editions. That particular issue, and the 1987 variant of Sword, are the only Classics editions that I don't have after all these years. Joke's on me for waiting, because people my age believe some silly rumor that these things are worth... One million dollars! So I don't know if they'll be in my collection anytime soon. The Alicia en el País de las Maravillas VHS pretty much works off of the early 90s US cover, and it even lists the English title of the film on the cover. Let's have a look at the spine. Los Clásicos. Very nice, though the aesthetic is far removed from the Art Deco style or even the style used for the French-Canadian VHS tapes. Walt Disney Home Video is in white, and you can actually see it from a distance. Never understood why they used red for the English language one. Like the Sword VHS, no previews, just the Spanish anti-piracy warnings, but no Classics logo, just the Walt Disney Home Video logo. Disney didn't create a Classicals version of the Sorcerer Mickey Walt Disney Classics logo, though as far as I know, most French-Canadian tapes use that logo, no translations needed. I've seen it on things like the Roxette Rocky VHS, the La Belle et La Bête VHS, and a few others. There aren't too many differences in terms of audio between the original English dub and the Spanish dub. There were some little things here and there where the vocals kind of overpower the sound effects and sometimes the sound effects overpower the vocals, but it wasn't anything too noticeable. There were a couple instances where the sound effects were a little different or sounded a little different, like in this scene, for example. And the ending credits music from the movie was not a redo of the one from the original English dub. They basically took the end of the opening song instead of reprising it. They just took the end of it and plastered it. End cast credits. Alice in Wonderland is unusual amongst early Disney animated features in that it has 
a sort of credits section for the cast, no less. Disney animated films made up until 1985 had their credits in the openings. And very rarely did any of them show what actors played who. As far as I can tell, this Spanish classics release of Alice in Wonderland was released sometime in 1992. 